Rosa Summers McGee, and I'm the founder and CEO of Workplace Change, a human resources firm located in Portland, Oregon. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the commissioner position for debate from City Club live on YouTube with candidates Mayor Sam Adams, Commissioner Chloe Udaley, Mingus Maps, and Seth Woolley. Before we dive into today's debate, on behalf of the City Club, I want to acknowledge that, today, that tonight is Passover, and happy Passover to those who are celebrating. All City Club programs will be available on our website for the duration of the primary election season, in addition to other in-depth local election coverage. Hold that thought. Mr. David, I believe you're not muted. Okay, now David is muted. Thank you so much for um, working with us through the technical difficulties. As we all know, we're living in unparalleled times. This is obviously not the most ideal way to hold a debate, but civic engagement is more critical than ever. That is why City Club has shifted all electoral programming online to be free for all. Thank you in advance, again, for your patience with any technical difficulties we may encounter. City Club is an organization that is dependent on ticketed event revenue. So to continue this programming, I am asking you to donate today. If every viewer donated $5 today, we would reach our goal and be able to continue offering free programming to keep democracy alive. Donate now by texting Support City Club to 44321. Again, Support City Club, one word, to 44321. I also want to encourage folks to engage in the conversation online as if we were all in the living room together. Send us your questions and comments online by emailing us at questions at pdxcityclub.org or engage with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook using at City Club or hashtag City Club Debate. You can also use the YouTube comment section below, which I saw many people were engaging in to let me know you could not hear me. So again, thanks for rolling with us. Whether you ask questions, share the link with a friend, or just watch the debate to get informed, all of us at City Club want to thank you for participating today. Thanks also to our sponsors, SEIU 49 and The Standard, in addition to our amazing media partners, X-Ray FM and KGW. Democracy must press on. In fact, we have a, lot of, we have a number of important online events coming up. April 17th is City Club Position 2 Debate Group 1. City Council Position 2 Debate Group 1. April 24th is City Council Position 2 Debate Group 2. April 28th is City Council Position 1 Debate. May 1st is Metro District 5 debate. May 8th, May Ballot Measure Forum. Mark your calendars and subscribe to our YouTube channel today. YouTube.com slash PDX City Club. Now, please join me today in, uh, please join me in welcoming today's candidates for Portland Commissioner Position 4. Mayor Sam Adams, Commissioner Chloe Udaley, Mingus Maps, and Seth Woolley. In a moment, each candidate will have two minutes to introduce themselves before we dive into questions, into the questions of the day. Each question has a 60 second time limit for candidates to respond with no time for rebuttals so we can get more of your questions answered. We will do a brief one word answer lightning round. Finally, each candidate will also have two minutes for closing statements. There is a timer off screen that only myself and the candidates will see to indicate when time is up. We ask for candidates to finish their statements um, and responses uh, when their time is up, or I will remind them if the time has expired. I wanna thank City Club for allowing me to review and amend the questions that we're asking today. And I know that um, many of the voters are very interested in the responses of the candidates. So let's get started. The speaking order was determined at random, at random ahead of time, and we'll be beginning with Mingus Maps. Mingus, please deliver your two minute opening remarks. Well, thank you, Sorelda. Uh, thanks to the City Club for organizing tonight's event. A uh, happy Passover. I also want to say hello to all my other candidates. It's been a long time since I've seen you folks. I hope everyone is staying well. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in tonight. I always like to open events like this by reminding people this is a very important election. Uh, the future of our, our city depends on the choices that we all make on election day. And uh, um, those choices will be made in the course of discussions like this. So I appreciate the ha having this opportunity to introduce myself. My name is Mengus Maps. I jumped into this race because I believe I have the background and vision needed to fix City Hall and to get Portland back on track. 
I have deep roots in Portland. I have a PhD in political science. I'm a dad. Uh, I'm, I've split my career between being an academic uh, where I teach on issues surrounding urban politics and being a public servant here in Portland. Now, I launched my campaign nearly six months ago. And uh, um, frankly, this race has never been more important than it is today. I'll tell you, um, even after we get through this health crisis, Portland will need to recover from one of the worst economic crises we have seen in a century. That's going to require constructive, creative leadership. Here are some of my goals for our recovery. I want to make sure that everyone stays healthy. I also want to make sure that people have money in their pockets. I don't want to see anyone lose their housing because of the situation, nor should any businesses go bankrupt. Um, I think we can meet these goals if we as a nation a state and a city pull together. And I've seen us pull together so many times. I have faith that we can get this, we can get through this and make real progress. And after we recover from the from the COVID crisis, and we will, uh, um, I have many other things which I hope to accomplish. Let's make progress on homelessness, affordable housing, and let's fundamentally reform uh, the way City Hall works. Uh, I'd like to change the way we hire members of city council uh, uh, and direct city council to hire a, uh, a city manager. Um, if you believe in things like this, um, I hope that you will support me. Thank you, Mingus. Next up is Mayor Sam Adams. Mayor Sam Adams, I can't hear you. I think you're still muted. Thank you. Okay, Thank, you City, Thank you, City Club, for uh, hosting this debate. Uh, with so much uncertainty, it's easy to feel afraid and scared for yourself, for your loved ones, for those most at risk uh, in this crisis. I've certainly feel, felt it at times. But I've also urgently felt that with the right leadership and the right actions, we can get through this together and become a more equal and more resilient place. It's really the, it, it really has to start with grappling with the unfortunate reality that we face. There's a good chance that this pandemic is gonna go on a long time and put at risk uh, more people's health. Uh, it is going to be one of the worst recessions that we've seen in a long time, threatening the loss of people's homes and, and businesses and, and jobs. But even in this dark moment, even in this dark moment, Portland has a glowing untapped potential to take on these challenges. I see it with my neighbors who are making masks uh, for other, for health workers. I see it with uh, volunteers at community health clinics and homeless shelters. I see it with the frontline workers, often unheralded uh, like grocery clerks. Uh, they all teach us, they all remind us that Portland at its core, Portlanders care more about each other and not just about themselves. And, and that will help us uh, get through. I think it's um, really important that we, we seize this moment together, uh, that we, make the right actions, take the right actions now. It's a, not only to rebound, uh, but also to remake our city into a better place for all Portlanders. It's important that we have hands-on experience in the next city council. Healing our city requires a, a, city, uh, a city council who has a trap with commissioners that have a track record of getting tough stuff done in tough times. And that's really what I bring to the table. I led the city through the Great Recession and uh, with job programs and more money for homelessness and houselessness. And I bring that with me in my candidacy for Portland City Council. I'd be honored to have your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Commissioner Chloe Udaly. I Okay. Thank you, Cyrilda. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for hosting us tonight. Thanks for joining us online. My name is Chloe Daly, and I'm running for re-election to Portland City Council. Um, I was inspired to run in 2016 by Portland's affordable housing crisis. If you know one thing about me, it's probably that. 
I was a small business owner, a cost burden renter, a single parent, and I was struggling to keep a roof over my family's head. I had devoted most of my adult life to Portland's literary and arts community, as well as activism and advocacy. I pulled off a surprise win on a shoestring budget, and I hit the ground running, passing the strongest tenant protections Portland renters have had in living memory. And working hand in hand with community, I've continued to deliver progressive policy solutions, whether it's addressing our housing crisis, climate change, transportation challenges, defending our immigrant and refugee communities, or confronting systemic inequities to elevate unheard and underserved communities. I'm running for re-election to continue the progressive change that we've made together to create a more just, equitable, and inclusive Portland for all. And I cannot see the timer, so I'm just gonna end it there. Thank you, Commissioner Udaley. Yeah. Okay, so the next person um, who is going to be presenting their two minute remarks is Seth Woolley. Uh, good evening, neighbors and friends. Uh, I'm Seth Woolley and I, I first want to thank all the frontline workers in delivery, grocery, firefighters, EMTs, public safety officers, doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers all people putting themselves at heightened risk to ensure the necessary parts of our economy function. I also want to thank the people in the background, all people working in the field and labs or remotely in this time of crisis to ensure our basic systems and utilities run smoothly. I'm running for Portland Commissioner number four to ensure that the city would have a voice for good government, better democracy, improved accountability systems, less influence from major donors and big businesses against the public interest, and then health would be a priority especially in relation to our government regulations. To those end, I founded Portland Clean Air, a pollution data analysis, education, and watchdog organization. I worked to hold government officials accountable by implementing campaign finance reform and disclosures, tracking election law and campaign finance violations of those in related reforms, and filing official complaints for those violations of the public trust. I've also been on two state task forces regarding campaign finance reform and fair legislative redistricting. My background is as a computer scientist in scientific computing systems, graph algorithms, navigation, logistic systems, and I currently work at an innovative Doppler weather radar startup company for real-time sensing of everything from forest fires to air pollution particulates, as well as rain. I architected and re-architected systems that operate at multinational scale with millions of users, responsive to streams of real-time data updates. And I thank the Portland City Club for this opportunity to discuss a vision for a better Portland responsive to its residents and neighbors rather than big money. All right, thank you. Well, that concludes our opening remarks and I wanna thank you all for, for your incredibly inspiring opening remarks. I appreciated them. I'm sure our, our viewers did as well. I'm gonna get into our, um, our questions now. So the first question that I'm gonna ask is focused on COVID-19. The Wall Street Journal posted or published an article today showing that the coronavirus is having a disparate impact on Blacks and Hispanics. While I haven't seen any local race and ethnicity data for COVID-19 patients, what would you do if elected to ensure inequities aren't exacerbated during this crisis? We're going to open up the responses by starting with Mayor Sam Adams. Well, I think this, uh, the fact that the COVID-19 virus is impacting communities of cover, color uh, disproportionately just, you know, lays bare uh, how inequitable the health system and healthcare system is uh, in in the United States, um, and the the need for further healthcare reform, uh, whether that's the single payer option added to Obamacare as a step towards healthcare for all, uh, something needs to happen. Um, but for the immediate term. Uh, we need to make sure that the assistance, the aid that's being flowing from the federal government is doing so in an equitable way. And equity defined here is uh, it should be going to the places in the United States that are having uh, the greatest difficulty uh, with COVID impacts right now. And Washington, D.C. should not be playing favorites. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Commissioner Udaley. How would you ensure that, or if reelected, how would you ensure inequities are exacerbated? Well, our uh, systemic failures are on full display right now. And uh, 
unfortunately, in the middle of the crisis, it's going to be challenging to address those disparities. I think uh, keeping people housed is a high priority. Getting assistance to workers who uh, currently don't qualify for relief from unemployment, uh, particularly undocumented workers and other people who fall through the cracks. Uh, there are so many things that we need to achieve in the coming months and years to ensure that we are better prepared uh, for this crisis. I was incredibly disappointed to hear from Senator Cassidy uh, yesterday, who is a doctor um, as well as a senator from Louisiana, attribute the root causes of the gross disparities in uh, deaths of African Americans in his state to health issues. Um, it's very concerning that leadership in our country doesn't understand uh, that there, there are root causes to those uh, issues as well, and uh, they are not addressing them. Thank Again, I, I cannot see a timer, so yep. it's uh, tough to know when to end. Well, that, that's time, and um, on okay. the of your access to the, to the timer, I will try to alert you gently um, as, uh, as okay. we try to kind of work, work these things out. Also, I'll set uh, one. Mingus Maps was, had dropped off, um, but I believe he's back online now. So I, I will just kind of roll with folks as they, they work through some technological challenges. Next up is Seth. Seth, please, how would you ensure that, inequ that inequities aren't exacerbated during this crisis? Yeah, so that's an, that's an excellent question of what to do about during. Um, the New York Times published a couple of articles, uh, one on how there's an, we're seeing a higher infection rate among African Americans, as well as higher death rates amongst those who are experiencing uh, uh, air pollution. And so uh, with systemic uh, environmental injustice, you see these disproportionate impacts with, with the higher infection rate multiplied by the higher death rate uh, of those who, who are infected. And so that's concerning for me too, because the multiplying effect is, is major. And it goes back to what I've been working on a lot, which is air quality. Uh, now, what can we do right now to do that? We, as well as working with county partners, state legislators, the, the governor and our Congress people to ensure we have resources. Uh, we, we really should be making sure that, that everyone has access to, to the healthcare they, they need right now. And make sure that, that we recognize that that uh, a lot of minorities happen to be some of these frontline workers, especially in the, not so much in the, the healthcare fields and, and stuff like that, but the delivery industries. Uh, and we need to make sure that they're supported through this, uh, especially, uh, I would like to see uh, more effort in there. Thanks. Thank you, Seth. And Mingus, can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. I keep you getting knocked off the call, but I, I think I heard the question. The question is, what do we do about uh, um, inequalities surrounding COVID? Yes. Excellent. Well, I look at this uh, along two dimensions. Number one, I'm concerned about the health inequalities that we see as this uh, crisis plays out. Um, and on that, one of the things I'll do is I'll work with the county and OHA and the state to make sure that, uh, or to find out if we have the same problems here in Oregon. And if we do, we need to change the way we're delivering health care. Um, I see another dimension, and this one is I care about a lot, and I suspect it's going to be part of our future, and that is the economic uh, disparities in the impact COVID is likely to have uh, on Portlanders. Portland has a terrible history of delivering services uh, um, on an inequitable basis, and we all know that. One way to change that is to reorganize our government so that we're focused on making sure that neighborhoods and um, every corner of city count, every corner of our city is represented in decision-making processes. That's one of the things I'll do by hiring a city manager and uh, changing the way we elect members of city council. It's time that we elect uh, city councils by neighborhood-based electoral districts. Thank you, Mingus. Our next question is going to be focused on policy. So over the past two years, what is something that City Council voted for that you opposed? Let's start with Commissioner Udaley. Just one thing. <laughs> uh, so 
You know, the reality of city council, although some people think it's quite contentious up there, is that we do agree the vast majority of the time. And the fact is we are often faced with two choices that um, neither of which are desirable. And uh, every once in a while, I have to take a principled stand. Uh, I did that um, last year with a vote on GS4, uh, which was uh, renewing a contract with a global security company that's been accused of human rights viola violations around uh, the world. That was a notable instance. Um, I will leave it there. I'm, I'm finding this quite challenging. I can hear things in the headphones and it's not clear whether you can hear me. So hopefully you did. Oh, we most certainly can hear you. Commissioner. Okay. There, there were no problems. If there, if you do have a closing thought, I want to give you another 30, 40 seconds if you, if you need that. And if not, no problem. We're going to move forward. That's fine. Okay. So thank you for the remarks. Seth, you're up next. Seth Willie. Yeah. So, uh, um, so my, what, I, what I'd really like to answer is what hasn't city council done at all. Uh, but <laughs> as far as what they have been doing, um, you know, the, I think the residential infill uh, program has uh, a few major flaws with it that uh, uh, there, there needs to be more uh, on that. They haven't completely voted on that yet, uh, but uh, uh, I think that we'll need to keep working on that. There, the, I do agree with uh, the environmental impact uh, statement for the I-5 Rose Quarter project, but I, I would go much further than that and uh, just can the whole thing entirely. I think expanding, uh, doing any expansion of, of I-5 uh, makes no sense. And so I've heard a, a lot of support from that instead of uh, just outright opposition. So th things of that nature, I'm, I'm really into trying to ensure that uh, uh, our funds are accounted for properly. And back to what I really care about, like campaign finance reform, there is a lack of referral on that. And so we had to take it to the voters directly. Um, things like that are really important. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Seth. Mingus? You oh, go. sure. Um, like a lot of Portlanders, I have been deeply disturbed by the attacks on our neighborhood association system. I believe that Portland is fundamentally a city of neighborhoods. You know, people come to uh, visit our city from all around the world, and they're not here to explore uh, and look at our tall skyscrapers. They're here to explore our charming neighborhoods. Uh, uh, Portland has been an innovator in the neighborhood association system. I've worked with it deeply, and I'll tell you, when I was there, people would come from around the world to study what we are doing. Now, that doesn't mean that... Uh, Neighborhood associations are uh, perfect. Uh, indeed, I think they need to grow with the 21st century. But one of the ways we can do that is to um, is to work together. As when I'm your commissioner, one of the things I'll do is I'll strengthen and modernize the, the neighborhood association system so it's more inclusive and more effective. Uh, um, and I, if you support that, I hope that you'll support me on election day. Mingus Naps, thank you very much. Thank you, Mingus. Speaking of neighborhood associations, that was a perfect segue into our next question. In the fall, there was a lot of media attention on the attempt to amend the part of the city code that the regular- Did you get an answer the question? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay, it's Sam. Mayor Sam Adams, did I not start the question with you? No. Okay, I'm sorry, I apologize, please. Oh, no, no worries. Um, I, I, I wanna commend the council for uh, three years after the the ballot measure was passed for getting the affordable housing bond money spent. But I think it's important to point out that the average cost per unit was $310,000. And I don't want to relitigate that or redo that, but it points out that beyond the work to spend the city's housing bond money, I really am underwhelmed with efforts on, city, on behalf of the city council to have more affordable housing built with private resources uh, and to leverage what money we have received from the voters through the port and bond measure was leveraged to a degree. I think it can be leveraged more. And the allocation that we're going to be getting for affordable housing from the Metro bond measure, which was passed a number of years ago, still a slow rollout, 
I'd like to see that leverage with much more private sector funding, keeping things, keeping it low affordable housing, uh, but at a less cost per unit. Other places are doing units at about $120 per unit. I'd legalize co-housing that is currently not legal in all parts of the city, uh, which is a new housing type that could be offered and uh, for ownership or rental. Um, there just needs to be some more innovation on the way we spend the city's very precious affordable housing tax dollars. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Okay. And so and I apologize for skipping you on that one. That's all right. Uh, the next question up is about neighborhood associations. In the fall, there was a lot of media coverage uh, on the attempts to amend the part of the city code that regulates the Office of Community and Civic Life and neighborhood associations. What do you think the role of neighborhood associations should be in Portland? And do you believe that the role should be reserved exclusively for neighborhood associations? And I'm going to start this out with Seth Woolley. You're up. Oh, I was hoping Mingus would go first, but uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a strong opponent. I'm a strong proponent of the neighborhood association system. Because we have at-large seats without proportional representation of any sort, we need to have alternative forms of collecting input. The neighborhoods help provide geographic diversity. And also at the same time, the community connect style of partnerships that the city has already developed that have activated underrepresented communities is critical also to enhancing the breadth of our democracy. We need to support both systems, but at the same time, we need to help both systems, both types of organizations get better at what they do to be more inclusive within their representative mandates with an eye toward accountability. And I was involved as a member of the public with the Charter Review Commission 10 years ago, pushing for uh, government systemic reform that would allow for more proportionality and diversity of voices. This type of input uh, could greatly uh, uh, take pressure off of having uh, all the uh, diversity of, of geogra geographic representation being in the neighborhood system. Uh, that request was blocked by city commissioners and the mayor at the time who wanted to limit the work. And now there's a developing consensus around that issue. So. Uh, um, I think we should work on that too. Thank you, Seth. Next up, Mingus. Mingus, are you there? Can you hear me? He's gone. Mingus has dropped off. When he drops back, when he pops back on, I'll give here, you. I'm here. Oh, I'm here. Mingus is back. Can you hear All me? Right, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hey, folks. Um, we're having, I'm having at least some technical difficulties on my end. Uh, the important thing that you hear is that I'm an advocate for our city's neighborhood association system. I think neighborhoods and neighborhood association systems are part of Portland's grassroots democracy. Um, they are not the only vehicle for getting information to our elected leaders, but they are an important one. And I, I see no reason why neighborhood associations and the volunteers who, who, who devote thousands and thousands of hours to doing uh, cleanups and organizing street fairs and getting rid of graffiti can't work alongside uh, uh, many other uh, groups. Uh, um, the notion that there is uh, something, uh, there's a, a conflict of interest or not enough room at the table for both neighborhood associations and other groups to participate in American politics, it's a sign of basic, basically a broken vision of leadership. And I, it's not the Portland that I know. The Portland that I know has always had room for more people at the table. And when I'm at the table at City Hall, I will fight to make sure that your voice is heard uh, whether you're a new immigrant group or a, a renter or uh, someone who's been involved in helping make our community better for decades and decades. So thank you for that. And uh, I'll stop my question, my answer there because I can't see the timer. And that's time, Mingus. So great job on that front. Thank you. All right, next up is Mayor Adams. Well, uh, I'm, a, I'm a supportive neighborhood associations. They have to change like all of us to be more inclusive of uh, historically disenfranchised uh, voices within the community. It's unfortunate that the reforms have been seemingly pushed off for three years. We can't afford to go three years without more uh, diverse voices in city decision making. My proposal is to create four commissions, create the, be able to curate, get applications and curate the diversity within the Black African American community, the Latinx community, um, and make sure that uh, this way they could have inclusion in city hall decision-making before decisions are made, review draft budgets, 
uh, hold bureau managers accountable for equal opportunity for both hiring and contracting. Uh, this is the kind of reform that is based on best practices around the world. And while we figure out the neighborhood associations, it will ensure that the great diversity of Portland is included meaningfully and at the right time in the process in Portland's decision making, not Thank afterwards. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Commissioner, you did. Okay. So to answer your question, um, neighborhood associations are a valuable and valid way for people to organize uh, and support each other in their immediate communities. Um, the code change effort was a response to a very concerning audit from 2016 of the Bureau, as well as a 30 year long conversation about the ongoing lack of diversity in our neighborhood associations. I strongly feel that we need to recognize the different ways that people organize and identify, and especially in a city that's seen mass displacement of communities of color, that is not always going to be geographically based. So that's what that effort was about. I'm very committed to civic engagement. Uh, we work hand in hand with the community. However, we engage community members, uh, I guess, who people aren't used to seeing at the table um, and or aren't used to sharing the mic with. And I think it's important that if the city of Portland, Portland claims to value civic engagement, we can't continue to invest in a network that doesn't fully reflect the diversity of our community. That doesn't mean that network needs to go away. It, needs, it means it needs to grow. Okay. And what I'm working on right now is creating a civic engagement online platform to bring our network into the 21st century and appeal to um, many of the types of people who are currently not showing up for their neighborhood association meetings because we need to hear from people across the whole city and from all walks of life. All right. Thank you, Commissioner Udaley. Okay, so, um, and I think I got to everyone. I think my tracking system is, is, is growing in its sophistication as we move along. Um, the next question that I have for you is a very specific question. So I want you to pay close attention to, the, to what I'm asking in the question, okay? Last year, City Club released a report examining the commission form of government. The report recommended three reforms, all right? Three reforms. First, Portland must transition to a modified council manager form of government. Number two, Portland must increase the size of city council. And number three, Portland must change how city councilors are elected with a recommendation to switch to district-based elections. Please address these recommendations specifically and whether or not you support each of them. And I'm beginning this out with um, Mingus Maps. Hi, um, I love this question. These cut to um, some fundamental reforms I want to make when I'm on city council. I believe that these will be some of my legacy projects. Yes, Portland has a, an incredibly outdated form of government. I'm a little bit of a political historian. I'll tell you, our city hall is 100 years out of date. The good news is there are some fundamental changes that we can make. Um, and I think the City Club did uh, a great job of outlining them. I agree with each of them. It's time that we hire a city manager to coordinate services across city bureaus. Uh, um, one of the dirty secrets about Portland is that our services are siloed, which means that our city bureaus don't talk to each other. Our left hand literally does not know what our right hand is doing. We cannot succeed as a city like this, especially at a time during of COVID. Uh, uh, um, I also think that we should elect members of city council through neighborhood based elections. Uh, I'm in this race because I believe representation matters. But the thing I hear every day is that my voice is not heard down at City Hall. We can fix that by changing the way we elect members of City Council so that uh, representatives from uh, um, East Portland all the way up to the West Hills are at the table when City Council is making decisions. Right. Finally, yes, uh, and we'll let it go. I agree with the last one too. Uh, let's increase the size of City Council. All right, wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Maps. Next up is uh, Mayor Adams. Well, we expect people with little or no experience to uh, start running very complex, sometimes multi-million dollar corporations. And Portland has grown threefold in population and expanded from 82nd or 92nd out to as far as uh, 186th. 
I've seen this issue kicked around a lot. It is time for a change, and this is what I suggest. Portlanders want change, but when it comes time to voting, they get nervous that perhaps someone has snuck in some language and very complex legalistic terms that inevitably are in charters. What I suggest is to put forward as a starting point for the discussion something that we all know, and that is the form of government currently used by Multnomah County, where you have an executive chair that can be the executive mayor, where you have the chief uh, operating officer that can be the city manager, where you have members of the board that are elected by districts, five of them. I think Portland should probably have more um, but this is a starting point for a discussion that I think can actually be approved by voters. Okay, thank you so much, Mayor Adams. Next up is Commissioner Udaly. And I want to remind everyone that when you're not talking, please make sure you mute. Like right now. So please make sure you mute your mics when you're not speaking because we can hear the background noise when someone else is um, responding to the prompt. So Commissioner Udaly, you're up next. Uh, thanks, Cyrilda. I'm not sure if I remember all three of the questions, but I will say that I am very interested and engaged in the conversation around changing our form of city government, although it's the only one I've ever known, being a lifelong Portlander, I'm certainly very open to change. I am concerned that because we do not have a single minority-majority district, that that will not guarantee a more representative city council. So I think there's more conversation to have around that. I uh, certainly believe we need more commissioners. Um, although if we change to districts, I don't think we would continue to be administrators, so the workload would probably be a little lighter. Um, I'd like to throw an idea out that I think, uh, well, I know could be more quickly implemented and would result in more representative uh, elections, which is ranked choice vote voting. Um, like I said, Districts aren't going to guarantee diversity on city council, council. but ranked, ch ranked choice voting is a, a proven method to, to elect more diverse candidates. Thank you, Commissioner Udaly. And the next person and the final responder to this question is Seth. Yeah, Please. thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it's good that I go last year, so I get to deal with the issue of do we do districts or professional representation via ranked choice voting. That's good. Uh, I'm, I'm very in favor of a, a more city manager form of government, so I agree with that one. I definitely agree with more counselors. And when you add more counselors, you get to do something really cool. You get to actually mix districts and proportional representation. It's, it's called mixed member districts. And so you can you can actually balance the two di different interests together until you get both. So there's no reason to try and split something here. We can have both types of systems. And uh, since I've, I served on the Secretary of State's redistricting task force for Oregon to help keep those recommendations fair and open. I'm a geospatial expert since that's what I work on professionally. So uh, yeah, this is my bread and butter. I'm really glad or excited to work on this. Thanks. Wonderful. Thank you, Seth. And I, I just want to one more time just highlight that when you're not speaking, it's imperative that you mute your, your mics because I can hear typing in the background as Seth was speaking, I definitely want to respect his time and give him the, the platform to uninterruptedly express his thoughts and ideas. So I, think, I, want I think it was Mingus. Oh, okay. So we're going to... I can't hear anything either. I'm so sorry. I'm going to restate that question right now. It's focused on housing and hopelessness and homelessness. Most local elected local elected officials and candidates say that affordable housing and homelessness are their biggest priority. We want to hear about one policy that you would prioritize that is controversial or different from the rest of your opponents. And we're starting first with Mayor Adams. Well, in 2015, the city declared that uh, houselessness and affordable housing was an emergency, but I think it needs to uh, start acting like that. For example, I agree with the creation of the Joint Office of Homeless Services, the additional resources there. 
but you can't expect the Joint Office of uh, Homeless Services to manage the operations of the city and the county. There should be a month, a, a weekly reading, a weekly meeting of all the bureaus and that have or should have uh, part of the workload to make sure that houseless folks get the services they need, those assigned to the city, and those that might be impacted by uh, camps or other impacts. It doesn't have to be an either or. Um, there should be a, 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 a houselessness a coordinator for the city. There isn't. This is not acting like an emergency. People are frustrated in not getting timely services, both those that are houseless and those that are impacted at times by camps and other things. We can and must do better with the resources that we have by spending them better and responding and planning ahead. It's the summer months are coming. I don't know if the city has a summer month strategy put together uh, for outside camping. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Mayor Adams. Commissioner Udaley. Well, I was one of the advocates who pressured the city to call for that housing emergency, and we were sorely disappointed when the city essentially hit the snooze but button uh, for the 50% of renters who were already cost burdened and uh, kind of clinging to the side of a sheer cliff. So I share the frustration. However, I've managed to do more for renters uh, protections in my first three years in office than any other commissioner uh, in living history. So uh, I have done nothing but work hard on affordable housing and um, tenant protections. Some of the things that I would like to see uh, we're in this housing crisis because our country has failed to recognize housing as a basic need and a fundamental human right. So I would like to see us uh, acknowledge that in a very real way moving forward. We need to pass a Tenants' Bill of Rights. We need to establish a citywide anti-displacement task force. We need funding for universal eviction defense. And we, uh, one program I'm working on right now is establishing a tenant opportunity to purchase program because I strongly feel that we need to move renters, especially low and moderate income renters, out of the rental market and into home ownership opportunities where they are guaranteed uh, safe, stable, affordable housing. They're able to build wealth and they're not stuck in uh, what really feels like a racket. All right, thank you, Commissioner Udaley. Next up is Mr. Woolley. Seth, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, can you hear me now? I can, go for it. Yeah, yeah we, uh, we, we need to support the region-wide metro tax to significantly increase res resources, even though I, I would be one who would be affected by that. But as far as a, a controversial uh, thing, uh, I actually, uh, you can tell probably by the bicycles all behind me, I like to do a lot of biking and bike camping. I really love camping. And I think when we have camps in the city, we need to make sure they have all the resources the regular campgrounds have. We need to be making sure that that any member of the public would want to, would, would think that would be an okay camp to, to be in. So that might be something that's, that's a bit controversial, that, that if we can't actually have housing for them, we should be dedicating resources for uh, improving the, the lives of these campers. And I know a lot of campers do, a, uh, they're really creative about how they, they manage very minimal resources. And we need to make sure that they, that they don't get all their stuff taken away, importantly. Uh, and so that's probably the most controversial thing. Uh, I, mean, I like camps. Thank you, Seth. Next up is Mingus. Hi, can you, everyone hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I think we're looking for controversial proposals to uh, solve homelessness. Um, one of my key proposals for solving homelessness comes from an insight. The most effective way to reduce homelessness is to prevent people from losing their housing in the first place. That's why one of my key proposals is to dramatically increase the amount of funding the city provides for short-term rental assistance. Now, to help people who fall on a hard time and aren't able to make their rent because let's say a pandemic happens 
Um, I, this is something we can do. One of the other things that we know is that it is 10 times more expensive to pay for a shelter bed than it is to stabilize someone in place in their own home. Uh, that's why I want to focus on keeping people in their housing um, in the first place. And also, uh, one of the things I also want to promise is when I'm on city council, I will be accountable for the policies I push. You know, if we declare a housing emergency um, and we're not seeing effective uh, 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 results from that, um, that's on me. Same thing with the neighborhood association system. If you're unhappy with the neighborhood association and that's my responsibility, then I'm the person you should talk to about that. And that's the kind of leadership I'll bring when I'm on city council. Okay, thank you, Mingus. Well, we have about seven minutes before we jump into the, the break and then we get into questions from the public. And so um, City Club has uh, initiated a lightning round. So I get to demo the lightning round. And okay. this is, I'm gonna ask you a question and you get one word answers only. Can you all play this with me? Can you give this a try? Thumbs up? Okay. So my first question, and I'm going to um, begin with, uh, um, with Mingus. My first question is, what neighborhood do you live in, Mingus? Buckman. Mayor Adams. Concordia. Commissioner Udaley. Kearns. Seth Willie. Uh, Alameda Grant Park Border. Okay. My next question for you is, do you agree with the Oregon <laughs> Transportation Commission's decision to not pursue an environmental impact assessment for the Rose Porter Freeway Expansion Project? Very specific. Okay. So, Mingus, what's your response? Yes or no? I believe I'm just no. I, I disagree with that choice. I think it's wrong and I'll fight it when I'm on city council. So that's a no. One word. Okay. Um, next up, uh, Mayor Adams. No. Commissioner U. Daly. No. Seth Woolley. No. All right. The num the third uh, question is how do you primarily get around? For example, car, bus, max, bike. Starting with Mingus. Bike. Uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, I'm sorry, Mayor Adams. Unfortunately, during this campaign, car and then bike. Okay. Commissioner Udaley? Bus. And uh, Seth Woolley? A bicycle. Okay. My next question, there are three more questions. What grade would you give the city's Office of Equity and Human Rights? Um, Mingus. Uh, B plus. Okay. Uh, Mayor Adams. Great people, but an incomplete score. That's with hyphens between them. Commissioner Udaley. That's not a fair question. Uh, I'm not going to answer it. And Seth Woolley. Uh, Moo, M-U. Okay. I want to go on the record that I did not write that question, nor did I write any of the lightning right questions. Okay, let's get to the final question. Or we have two more. The next question is, do you support a rent freeze during the coronavirus crisis? Mingus. Yes. Mingus. Yes. Uh, Mayor Adams. Depends on the details. Commissioner Udaley. Yes. Seth Woolley. Yes. Okay, and the final question is, have you made your own face mask? Mingus. No. Mayor Adams. Our neighbor, Jamie, made me one. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Udaley. Yes. And Seth Woolley. No. Okay. So I think I have enough time to get to maybe one more question uh, before uh, we get into the, pu the public questions. And um, the question is going to be focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And starting us off is going to be Commissioner U. Daly. So, Commissioner U. Daly, uh, we talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion in city in our city a lot, in the city of Portland a lot. But the tangible and intangible inequities and disparities continue to exist, specifically across racial lines. Why do you believe the city of Portland continues to struggle with racial equity from a wealth and opportunity creation standpoint? And what will you do as commissioner to address and disrupt this reality? Wow, that's a big question, Cyrilda. Are we talking uh, internal or external? 
I think you should, you feel free to use your discretion on okay. this. Okay. Like to take it. I mean, our state and our city has a shameful history of a racist past. And uh, we have spent decades implementing discriminatory public policy um, to engineer a system that is segregated and inequitable. I don't believe that it was by accident. Um, it was largely by design. And I believe very strongly that whether it's the city, the county, uh, the state, ODOT, uh, whatever governmental agency was involved, we all have a responsibility, even though most or none of us were here when a lot of the worst decisions were made, to uh, deliver real remedy to these impacted communities, in particular the African-American community. Um, it's not enough to say you're sorry. Okay. That's the first step All to right. a meaningful process. Thank you so much, Commissioner. You daily, Seth Woolley. So I've, I've talked a lot about the external solutions with uh, government reform and uh, uh, fairness there for equal opportunities. And so uh, I'd like to address this more internally. Uh, I, I worked at a, a one of the fastest growing companies in the world that uh, had major problems in this these types of areas and uh one of the things that happens is it that happened is it made the international news essentially and all the employees that were were part of that that uh, were experiencing a lot of that problem that uh, came to collect together as kind of a collective voice and really pushed the management to to help dramatically change the system and so uh it needs the leadership that's willing to actually move uh, with uh, the, the employees and the, and the public to, to make dramatic change. We did a whole bunch of things, uh, in, totally incomplete, but we did things like uh, we got trainings from Harvard Business School on best practices for how to improve our hiring. Uh, we failed to implement a number of things like we didn't do Rooney Rule or resume blinding, which I thought we should have done. But there were uh, many outside consultants came in. We had hotlines that people could call anonymously, a bunch of uh, accountability measures that allowed people to really express themselves and get it to people who could make change. Okay. Thank you so much, Seth. Next up, Mingus. Oh, thank you, Sorelda. Um, I am deeply committed to fighting for issues of um, equity and inclusion. Um, this commitment comes from my experience as a black man who has uh, um, spent much of his life in Oregon. Um, I or know Oregon well enough to know that it was less than 100 years ago that Oregon repealed the last of its black exclusion laws, the laws that prevented black Americans from living in this state. When I serve on city council, I will be only the third African American man to have ever held that post. Um, and when I'm on city council, there are a couple of things I'll do. I'll make sure that the city delivered services equitably to every Portlander, regardless of race, uh, gender, creed, religious orientation, sexual orientation, or sexual identity. I'll hold the city accountable for hiring people who look like Portlanders. Um, and then I'll hold the city accountable for uh, uh, retaining those people and putting them in positions of power and tracking the course of their careers uh, because this change starts with leadership um, and i look forward to leading the next generation of uh, civil rights movements here in the city of port thank you Mingus. mayor adams i think as i discussed before creating four commissions uh african-american black americans uh latina uh, latinx uh, native americans Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders, and part of what they can be charged with both as a resource, but also to evaluate bureau managers and also to evaluate commissioners in charge in terms of their efforts in their portfolios. That's inside the city at the leadership level, including are we seeing matriculation up of people of color? I started the Future Connect internship program, summer internship program for high school students because I also know that we have to have young people involved in the city so that as they're making career choices, uh, students of color, if they're making career choices, they see the city of Portland as a place that they could make a living. That's an example. Of it. And then obviously support people 
of color running for city council. I was an early supporter of Carmen Rubio. There are other great uh, candidates of color that are running for city council. Uh, we need to support them. All right. Thank you very much, Mayor Adams. Okay, so we're gonna transition now. For those of you just tuning in, this is the City Club of Portland coming to you with our virtual debate for Commissioner Position 4. I'm your moderator, Cyril Summers McGee. Support City Club with a donation now by texting Support City Club, one word, to 44321 uh, so that we can br keep bringing you this important election coverage. We will now take questions we have received from the public. And I'm transitioning us over. Um, first step to respond to the question will be Seth Woolley. Okay, so this question is, um, the, the, the focus is on people with disabilities. People with disabilities are constantly treated like tokens in Portland decision-making. The Office of Equity and Human Rights was meant to change that. The success of that is questionable. What are you willing to do to give people with disabilities 20%, which is 20% of the people in the city, a meaningful place at the table? As a, Okay, so I'm not going to go to the follow-up. So that's the question. What are you willing to do to give people with disabilities who make up 20% of the city's population a meaningful place at the table? And again, Seth, you're starting out with your, with by responding to that question. Yeah, so uh, uh, since I, I worked at an, an, an international company, and one of the things I worked on a lot was internationalization and to try and make uh, the application accessible to uh, worldwide users. It's really difficult to inter to integrate accessibility into stuff. Uh, uh, disabilities and uh, I consider a, a portion of a larger uh, uh, effort to create increased accessibility. And the way I would do that is it's really difficult to uh, to take time off work, go to city hall. You have to show up in person. And introduce a lot more digital means to and, and also provide more uh, services that such as uh, like sign language interpretation and, and other ways to uh, really open that up. And uh, in, in general, yeah, the way we're doing it right now is, is uh, cloistered into, into the city hall. And we need to really get out and expand our, our systems of how we, we collect input. Thanks. All right, thank you, Seth. Mingus. Mingus, are you there? I am here, can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you. I think this is a very important question. Um, one of the reasons why I'm running is I believe in representation and I believe in participation. Um, and that's especially true for uh, our new friends and neighbors who suffer from disabilities. Um, I think there are two ways to fix this. Number one um, is to make sure that the city holds itself accountable to delivering services to people who, have, uh, who are differently abled. Uh, and number two, I think it's important that we hire people with disabilities, uh, both to uh, uh, work on everything that the city does, but also to help us help lead on the issue of disabilities and accessible and accessibility. Um, I think that we can do this by giving those hiring folks like that, giving them power, giving them resources, and taking it seriously. And when I'm on city council, that's exactly what I will do. Thank you, Mingus. Next up. Mayor Adams. Well, when I was uh, on the city council, we uh, were one of the early cities to be certified for AARP um, because eventually many of us as we age will, will have uh, different abilities. So um, if, if you think this is only for you know, other people, uh, it's not. We all uh, will at some point, or many of us at some point will become disabled. I think it needs to be uh, tracked uh, by the city in terms of hiring and retention like everything else. And there have been some efforts to do that, um, but I think that uh, improvements on that can be made and starting with the sort of re-empowerment and uh, you know, re-energizing the disability commission and the staffing for that in the city of Portland, um, it, it needs the attention uh, that it deserves. Thank you, Mayor Adams and Commissioner Udaley. Thank you. <clears throat> well, I am the parent of a amazing 19-year-old kid who happens to have a significant disability. I've spent the past 19 years working on disability advocacy, and I've made it one of the focuses of my work at City Hall. Uh, one of my 
ongoing concerns, uh, which is really being uh, amplified right now during this crisis, is what a poor job we do with providing consistent accommodations. So the first step uh, to giving, to pro making a meaningful place at the table for people with disabilities is providing them the accommodations that they need consistently across all bureaus. And it's why I've fought every year for a central accommodations fund and someone to oversee accommodations because it's currently left up uh, to individual bureaus and it's very inconsistent. Uh, we work with the disability community through civic life. We have a annual um, training pro self-advocacy training program hosted numerous events and we engage people with disabilities on really every issue that we're working on we i bring a universal design mindset to city hall and that means that you design whether you're designing a sidewalk or designing a policy you have to understand and address the needs of the, ex the most extreme users and when you do that, the middle will take care of itself. We haven't been doing that. And it makes our city very inhospi inhospitable to many people with disabilities. Thank you, Commissioner Udaley. Our next question from the public is uh, focused on small businesses. The pandemic has illustrated the vulnerability of most of our younger citizens, as well as the small businesses many of them work at including restaurants, bars, coffee houses, boutiques, small scale manufacturing, and many other retail and professional services businesses. What will you do to bolster the viability of locally owned enterprises that employ so many Portlanders and enhance the character of our city? Also, let's just start with that one. What would you do to bolster the viability of locally owned enterprises that employ so many Portlanders and enhance the character of our city. First up is going to be Mingus. Mingus, are you there? Mingus? Okay. Got me? Can you hear me? Yeah, Mingus, I can hear you. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, thank you for this very important question. It's actually the, pre I think the pressing question of the day uh, as we sit at really the beginning of the economic crisis that COVID has uh, uh, brought along. Um, one of the things I think members of city council should do are what we see governors do right now, um, articulating the needs of their city, uh, uh, um, sharing that with both state leaders and federal leaders. Um, we need people on city council, you know, in front of microphones every day, um, telling the, the feds uh, uh, and the state, you know, how many dollars we need to stabilize our businesses. I don't want to see a single business in Portland go under because of this COVID crisis. And I don't think it has to. But in order to get there, we need to work together at the federal level, at the state level, and at the local level. And at the local level, I will be an advocate for you, small business. And I also have a deep roots with uh, 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 Prosper Portland and the small business community uh, in, in Portland. I know all the challenges that you face. I'm a business district kind of guy. Um, I will be your partner when I'm in City Hall. Hold on, help is coming. Thank you, Mingus. Next up is Mayor Adams. Well, small businesses in Portland can't hold on. They need help now. And that's basically why I've transformed my campaign in the last three weeks to advocating on behalf of those that uh, work at small businesses and, and uh, help small business owners. Just today, contacting our federal delegation to really intercede on behalf of small businesses, many of which are finding they cannot ask the paycheck uh, protection uh, package that was recently passed by Congress because their financial institution isn't providing it and other financial institutions are requiring that they have a pre-existing relationship for three months before they will even take a loan application. Whether it's been uh, trying to get expedited unemployment insurance benefits and waive the, uh, the one week waiting period, whether it's doing promotional videos for businesses that are trying to remain open with delivery uh, and takeout. In some ways, the last three weeks of this campaign have been surreal. There is so much that each of us with our bully pulpit can be doing to try to preserve jobs by advocating to decision makers, 
not when we get elected, but now. And that's what I've sought to do. All right. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Commissioner Udaley. Thank you. Well, I was a small business owner for 22 years in Portland, and I certainly know how uh, hard it is to survive uh, even uh, when it's not during a crisis. Um, this is not a single issue. Our housing crisis has uh, significantly impacted our small businesses from multiple directions. Uh, their own housing costs have gone up. Their employees can't afford to live in Portland anymore. And their customers have less discretionary income to spend in restaurants and retail stores. So getting our affordable housing crisis under control is uh, one essential step to stabilizing small businesses. I have been in contact with our state uh, legislature, legislators and our federal delegation and uh, city council every week talking about the economic impacts and the ways in which the federal relief uh, and local initiatives so far uh, either don't help or don't go far enough to save so many of the businesses that really make Portland Portland. I'm particularly concerned with any business right now that depends on a sizable gathering of people because we do not know when we're going to be able to do that again. And I don't want to come out the other side of this crisis with no music venues, restaurants, or bars. So um, I'm a very loud and frequent voice advocating for the small business community. I also want to bring back the Small Business Advisory Committee, set up a preservation fund for our legacy businesses, and uh, provide more free legal assistance for Thank small businesses. Thank you very much, Commissioner Udaley. And Seth, you're up next. Yeah. Uh, well, first, I'd point out that when you get money out of politics, big business has a harder time competing against small business because they can't rig the game against the small players anymore. And uh, we rarely have people who have built small business startups on, in, in the city. And so uh, Chloe and myself would be would be great in that respect. I've been in the private sector for a couple of decades building startup companies. And I think supporting a public bank, which uh, may not be a municipal bank, but a state bank, uh, to, to transfer a public person to it so that we can redirect a lot of that into our local businesses rather than having a national firm send that all to Silicon Valley. Uh, businesses are often restricted by a lack of access to capital, especially as most of that venture money did go to these big companies in the past few years recently. And uh, we also need to support entrepreneurship training because part of the uh, transitioning uh, uh, is building the ability to shift businesses like uh, during recessions. There are a lot of businesses, business experts that are out of work, and we can subsidize those to, to go into the still existing businesses. They're, they're still struggling to help them improve. There, there are a lot of different ways to uh, address this issue. We should have people who are aware of business try to address it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. OK, well, that's all the time we have for um, the questions today. We're going to now transition to closing remarks. You will each have two minutes to share with our audience and voters why they should vote for you for commissioner position four. We'll start with candidate commissioner Chloe Udaley. Thank you, Cyrilda. Well, uh, a little more than four years ago, I could have never imagined I would be in the position that I'm in now. This was not uh, the plan that I had for my life. And I really ran out of necessity I was struggling and I saw too many uh, of my friends and neighbors struggling as well. I'm not a career politician. I'm not a lifetime bureaucrat. I don't have a lot of nostalgia about the Portland that was because I now understand that the decisions that have been made in the last 10, 20, 30 years have directly led us to the situation that we're in today. And we need to look forward uh, to new solutions, and we need to move forward. Um, I'm also not a big fan of the status quo, and that makes some of my uh, policies and positions controversial. Uh, because this isn't what I plan to do with my life, and because I'm not a career politician, I'm not going to shy away from those things. And in office or out, uh, in office or out, I will never stop fighting for progressive change and a better future for 
all Portlanders. Thank you, Commissioner Udaley. Next up is Seth Woolley. Closing remarks. I want to again thank our first responders and the entire public really because we're all in this together. We're all choosing to socially distance even when it drives us a little bit mad. We've been forced into more digital forms of interactivity and in the long run, that's not very healthy as we all know. I also wanna thank again the City Club for this opportunity. Uh, they have in the past been exclusive against minor party candidates uh, and those who are upstarts. With public funding this time, their metric for inclusion has been moved to something that's more of an individual support metric. So now those with significant grassroots support can be included. However, I would have liked to have seen more candidates than just the four get included. Uh, I joined this race to, to push for systemic reform, such as commissioner system reform. I'm sure we have campaign finance reform and disclosures enforced, and to go beyond the successes we've already had at the ballot box. I'm running to push for the city to do more on industrial polluters, dirty diesel trucks in particular matter, as our county is in the top 1% of counties for respiratory distress. And that leads to example worse outcomes with coronavirus. I'm running to push for more government transparency, improving our systems so bureaus are universally more efficient with public records and openness. And I'm running to push for more Green New Deal type efforts to help solve climate change. With my background in data analysis, high scalability, uh, computational systems, and a long record implementing government re reforms and pushing to hold politicians accountable, I will do everything I can to ensure we build deep democracy one reform at a time. To learn more, check out sethsforportland.org and it's not too late to support with matching funds. Thanks again. Thank you, Seth. Next up is Mingus. Hi. Um, thank you, Zerelda. Thank you, City Club. Thank you for everyone uh, for tuning in tonight. Uh, 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 this is a very important election, and I really appreciate the fact that you are paying attention to this. The future of our city literally depends on it. I also want to thank the thousands of Portlanders who've come out over the last six months to support us on the campaign trail. We love you. I'm grateful to all the organizations who have endorsed us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You can go to our website, mengusmaps.com, to find out who some of those folks are. And I want to thank everyone who's donated to our campaign. Uh, we're doing public financing for this race, which means I don't take dollars from corporations. I don't take dollars over 250 bucks. Um, um, I only accept donations from real people like you. Um, as Seth said, it's not too late to get in this race. Uh, um, if you go to mengusmaps.com and donate, that would be amazing. <laughs> Uh, um, and I also want to thank Portland for doing such an amazing job of flattening the curve. We're all sheltering in place now. I know it's not easy. I've been in this house with uh, a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old for about a month now, uh, but we're doing great. I couldn't be prouder of the city for doing what it needs to do to make a difference. We have managed to flatten the curve. It's an example of what we can do when we work together. And that's good because we're going to need to work together to solve problems like homelessness and affordable housing. I want to change our city. Let's fundamentally reform the way our city is organized. Let's hire a city manager, change the way we elect members of city council. I think this race fundamentally comes down to a choice. Uh, we have candidates who represent the past, we have candidates who represent the status quo, and we have candidates who represent the future. And I hope to be your future focused candidate. I'm constructive, I'm evidence-based, I have the training to do this job. Uh, uh, um, if you wanna see someone like me on city council, please vote for me on election day. And if, you want, if you're curious, if you're Mingus curious and you wanna learn more, please go to mingusmaps.com and take a look at where we stand on the issues. Uh, thank you everybody and have a good night and have a happy Passover. Thank you, Mingus. And the final close remarks from Mayor Adams. Well, thank you to the City Club and for everyone that tuned in. Thanks to uh, my fellow candidates in this race, both uh, that joined us at the debate and others. I can't stress enough um, at what a perilous tipping point we are. The City Council needs to lead um, not just a rebound and recovery but needs to lead an opportunity to remake the city so that it is more equitable for all and more sustainable. And that requires a level of experience that would challenge the most experienced. Um, I don't have all the answers, much, much less all the questions, but with the unpredictability of what we're facing, we need experienced hands on in, on city council and not just experienced, but also uh, that have the ability to work well with their colleagues on council, 
to bring in uh, disparate voices, to bring in historically, to reach out to historically um, disenfranchised voices. We can do our best. We can make great strides to improve Portland. But I have to say, reading through voters' pamphlet statements and and respectfully some of the conversation here, I, I don't think it's sunk in just uh, how critical it is at this point, not to just talk about what we need to do, but how we can do it. And that means showing the kind of advocacy that my campaign and my supporters have been showing in the past three weeks. I offer proven, experienced, creative um, work uh, as a member of the city council during very tough times, getting very tough stuff done bringing people together. That's what I offer here in my race for city commissioner. I'd be honored to have your vote. You can learn more at samadamspdx.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Adams. Our time is up. I wanna thank you so much candidates, uh, Mayor Sam Adams, Commissioner Chloe Udaley, Mingus Maps, and Seth Woolley for joining us today. And thanks to all of you for joining online uh, from home. Thank you again to today's sponsors, The Standard and SEIU 49, and to our media partners, KGW and X-Ray FM. In order for City Club to continue to, buy, to provide quality, in-depth information to voters, especially in these uncertain times, we need your support now. Make a donation today, whatever you can give. If everyone gave five bucks, we would make our goal. Just text support City Club, all one word, to 44321. Let's, uh, let's all work together to keep democracy moving forward. Stay engaged and ask questions using questions at pdxcityclub.org or on social media using hashtag City Club Debate. Let's find out what's possible when we truly make space for everyone to connect, share ideas, and build for the future. Thank you again. Happy Passover. And we are adjourned. Have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody. Good night.